Namaste. So the events of the last few days, if you haven't been following, <laughs> I recalled that my original and authentic enlightenment occurred way back in 1967 during an LSD trip. Now, this has profound consequences, for me at least, because back uh, when I first met my Adi Guru about 1970, I had taken the position that psychedelics can't give you authentic enlightenment. That any enlightenment experience uh, during a, a drug experience was just a hallucination, just an imagination, and therefore only temporary. Well, <laughs> I have to revise that position, which I've held for a long time. I was saying that only the traditional sadhanas, only the uh, natural forms of meditation and so on, could give lasting self-realization. And that's just not true. <laughs> enlightenment is enlightenment. Non-duality is non-duality. And when you experience it, the conditions don't really matter because you're going beyond conditions. Somehow or other, I think it went like this. I'm still working on this. This is, this you can tell I'm kind of riffing it here. That the uh, stress of the drug experience, the psychedelic experience, in a person who is already predisposed to self-realization, either by karma or intention or both, can result in a breakthrough where that person experiences authentic non-duality. And by the way, there is support in the scriptures for this. And in the next series, we're going to be going into that. In the Jnana Khanda of the Tripura Rahasya. And uh, I'm going to be reading and commenting on uh, certain excerpts from that. But meanwhile, what I want to say is that this, recalling this, uh, experience that I had buried uh, because I couldn't handle it. When it happened to me, I had insufficient background, insufficient uh, ontological support for the experience. I had nowhere to fit it in my conscious mind. So I buried it. However, this gave me a very strong motivation to attain the same thing by traditional means. And I did. <laughs> In many different ways, uh, I went through traditional sadhanas for Krishna Bhakti and uh, uh, what's it called? The uh, the Sikh path, oh, Satnam path, or uh, anyway, Nad Yoga. And then uh, I was with Osho Rajneesh for a while and went through his uh, particular things, and I got the result from that, which turned out to be first path realization. And then I became later on a Buddhist monk and so on. 
So, these different realizations were only reflections or, how can I say, like reminders, pointers back to the original experience in 67, which until very recently I was still unaware of. Even though I had done a year and a half of intensive therapy and gone clean back to my birth <laughs> and recalled everything about my early childhood and so on. I still didn't recall that until I had a, an adequate platform, conceptual platform, to hold it. I'm going to make a crude analogy. Imagine you have a spaceship landing. Uh, it has to have a landing field. Let's say it's a really big spaceship, you know, like the size of Manhattan. <laughs> it's going to need a really big landing field. And if you don't have something adequate, it can't land. You see? So that was the problem. Even though in my chart there is four moksha karakas, and even though I, uh, in principle, I had nothing against people having uh, enlightenment or spiritual experiences on LSD, I couldn't accept intellectually that someone could attain authentic enlightenment, the real thing in that way. And so I had to suppress my own memory <laughs> of that happening to me. And so I struggled for many years to confirm or to, how can I say, to relive. You know, it's just like when a person is neurotic and they have a traumatic experience that they can't digest, they can't accept. And so they push it down into the subconscious. And then they start to act out this traumatic experience in so many ways in their conscious life. Because what's really happening is that the mind is trying to resolve this tension. The mind is trying to, to bring up the original trauma so that it be, can be confronted and resolved and the lessons learned going forward. So something similar was happening to me where I had experienced something I could not digest because of lack of background. I mean, I was raised in a working class family in a, a Protestant Episcopal environment. That was my ontology growing up. Yeah, I had read things by yogis and like that and even got some lessons from Swami Vishnu Devananda in Hatha Yoga. And he had written something about non-duality and this and that, but I didn't really get it, you know? I didn't have enough association. Uh, when I met my guru, he was a, a hardcore dualist, <laughs> a sectarian uh, bhakta. So, for many years, I lacked the conceptual tools, the, uh, the ontology, to confront my experience and to understand it for what it really is. So I, I buried it. I kept it in my subconscious. But that influenced me to act out the drama of enlightenment in many, many different contexts. And you know, I, I think there's two, two things fall out of this right away. I think there's a lot of other people like me. Because, my God, back in the 60s, everybody in my age group was taking acid. It was just the thing to do, you know, in San Francisco in the mid-60s. If you didn't do it, man, you were square, you know? <laughs> 
And who wants to be square when everybody is turning on, tuning in, <laughs> dropping out? Uh, you know, square is the last thing you want to be. So <laughs> everybody I knew had taken acid at least once, even uh, really straight technology types who worked in Silicon Valley that I met later on. They were going like, well, yeah, back in the 60s, I, I did inhale, you know. <laughs> but now I've got responsibilities, so I can't uh, be like that anymore. Well, that's all right. But I bet a lot of those people, whether intentionally or not, had some kind of far out experiences in their trips that they just couldn't digest and so had to more or less forget about them. But of course, you can never really forget about something like that. Something that's so powerful. So it lies buried in the subconscious and influences your behavior today. So I would guess a lot of the people involved in traditional Indian spirituality, for example, or maybe even in uh, Christianity, who knows, had these kind of experiences in the past, which are now pushing them toward some kind of self-realization. And they, they need the structure, they need the framework of a traditional path because they can't handle raw non-duality. I mean, it's scary. There's nothing to hold on to. Any structure, any mental set is just completely drowned out by the pure awareness, unconditioned awareness. My God, <laughs> literally. So how has this changed me? Well, for one thing, I'm more open to people who had enlightenment experiences uh, during a drug or associated with the drug. And for another thing, I'm reevaluating my own experience and my consciousness is also changing. Uh, it's gotten much lighter and brighter. <laughs> and I'm also seeing space, emptiness as the reality and the uh, manifestations, objects, things, as simply a projection, simply a, a, a dream, really, that comes and goes. Even my own body, even Arunachala Hill here. Uh, I see the space around it as being more real than the thing itself. So this is one of the symptoms. <laughs> space, time, all these things, even consciousness are dependently arisen phenomena. But awareness, pure unconditioned awareness of awareness is the reality. So now what does this mean? It means uh, I'm seriously looking at leaving India and coming back to the West and being an advocate for the psychedelic experience as a means towards self-realization. We have so little time left. Uh, so, such a small window of opportunity before any kind of plans are going to be drowned out by the chaos of climate change and so on. So I, I think uh, I've been very much under internal pressure to take some action. But what action? Because all the traditional paths to self-realization, which is the greatest need of humanity, especially today, actually all the time, but especially right now, uh, but all the traditional paths are too slow. I mean, when they work, they work in an instant but it can take years to set yourself up for it. So uh, this means for me, 
the rest of my life would be best spent advising and counseling and coaching people to accept these experiences as real and giving them the background, which is pretty much what this channel is all about. Huh? giving the background for them to be able to digest these experiences and make them an integral part of their self and to accept the, uh, the meaning of self-realization as the end of conditioned existence, birth and death in the material world. Om Tat Sat. Buddha Saranai.